What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Steph. Back with another reaction. This time, we have Nightmare Files. Three disturbing catfish experiences that will creep you out. Uploaded February 15th, 2019. Down in the description will be a link to Nightmare Files channel, along with the link to this original video, so y'all could go see it for yourselves without my commentary. Without further ado, let's get into it. I'm, I'm trying a new recording setup, you know, placement of everything. I guarantee one of these is going to be a guy meeting girls online, girls online trying to get his dick sucked, try to get some ass he's going to get fucked up for. Watch. Back when I was in high school, my friends and I would meet up with girls from MySpace. A lot of them thought that we were famous because we would promote our own music and parties on the website. Usually I would direct message girls in order to get to know them, but one day I checked my messages and a girl told me that she loved my music. I went on her page and she was beautiful, so I messaged her back. I let her know that I was interested in outdoor parties. She let me know how impressed she was, so I kept telling her how she can come to our parties and I'll let her in for free because money wasn't an issue. We messaged back and forth for about two days, and I asked her for her phone number. She let me know that she can only text right now, so we continued to conversate <clears throat> only through our phones. We decided to meet one day. I told her that we can go out, but she insisted that we meet at her house instead. Watch that. As a teenage boy, I planned on going there by the end of the night anyway. Right. So she sent me her address, and my GPS said it was about 30 minutes away. Not bad. I know this sounds fishy, but I thought it was too, so I brought my friend with me. Yeah. I had him sit behind the passenger seat just in case the girl gets in. So I pulled into a group of apartment buildings. This place definitely looked sketchy. There were boarded up windows on almost every building. Trash on the ground, and there was no one around. As I'm pulling up, my friend and I looked at each other as if we knew something wasn't right. He said we should go, but I didn't. I texted and I told the girl I was pulling up where she told me to, which was behind the building in the back. I backed into a parking spot, and she texted me asking if that was me. I let her know it was me, but I thought it was weird because there were no lights on. And again, there was no one around. So we sat there for about a minute and she texted me back that she would be down soon. As I was texting back, all I hear is my friend scream, oh shit. Along with glass breaking and footsteps running toward us. I look back and I see a man in a ski mask trying to reach in the car and grab my friend. I look outside and I see three more hooded men with ski masks on and one of them yelled, get the driver. My friend screamed, go. But I've never felt fear like this in my life. But not freeze. Luckily, I still had the car running. Good. I put the car in drive and we sped off. Hell yeah. As I did that, my friend pulled the mask off the guy that was trying to grab him. We went straight to the police station. And my friend eventually ID'd one of the guys. The guy that he ID'd just so happened to be the guy who was texting me. I wish I can tell you that I have never done that again, but that would be a lie. Huh. That's just the only bad experience I ever had with meeting girls online. You'll learn. Your second head was about to get you fucked up. And the fact you didn't learn your lesson, pff, you and your friend deserve whatever happens in the future. This story is from a female's point of view. Okay. When I was in college, I worked in an Applebee's to make ends meet. I worked there from freshman year to senior year, so I had some regular customers. I had one that tipped me the most, and his name was Larry. Anyways, one day, while at work, I received a friend request on Facebook from a guy that was really attractive. I checked his page out before I accepted it, and it seemed legit, and he was in my city. As soon as I accepted it, he messaged me and said, hey, thanks for accepting my request. That was usually code for creep when someone does that. Yeah. But he was cute. I said no problem, and we continued to converse. Eventually, after a few days chatting, we decided to go on a date. 
I decided to meet at Chili's on a Friday at 6 p.m. because I don't know this guy, and maybe he's crazy. I arrived at the restaurant before him, and I messaged him to let him know that our table was under my name, and he said okay. After about 20 minutes, I messaged him back, but he didn't reply until 20 minutes later telling me that he wasn't going to make it. I was pissed, but I ordered and ate my food. Right. I left and I drove home. When I got to my apartment, I walked up the stairs to get to my apartment and I hear something behind me. I get to my door, turn to my left, and I see a man standing at the bottom of the stairs looking at me. I look closer and I see that it's Larry, my customer at work. See? I frantically asked him, what is he doing here? And he told me it's okay. No, it's Always not. make sure you make it home safe. Always. Then he said, sorry, I couldn't make it to the date. I said, what? Wow. I tried unlocking my door, but I dropped my keys. And he started running up the stairs yelling, it's not what you think. God. I grabbed the keys, unlocked the door, and ran inside, closing my door behind me. He started banging on my door, telling me he was my best customer and he deserved me. What? I called the cops, and they caught him outside in my car, just sitting there calmly. After that, I deleted all of my social media and dating apps. Then I quit my job at Applebee's. There you go. Ever since that experience, I I'm bet. very paranoid of people's intentions, and I always carry a pistol. <laughs> Should have been doing that anyway. All young women who go out at night, especially by themselves, need to be carrying some type of weapon. And make sure their phone is, I was a big you know, guy on them. Years ago. Everywhere I went, I would update my location and then update, you know, my body count. Then I quit doing Tinder and stuck with Instagram. I bet. I know they're completely different. And IG has a bunch of fake accounts. Yep. So I saw this girl commenting on all of my friends' pictures. Then she commented on mine. I also saw my friends replying, so I figured she was a real person because I looked on her page and she had way more followers than people she was following. So I DM'd her. I definitely thought she wasn't going to reply, but she did within an hour. We talked for maybe two or three weeks and we made it official. She was pretty, had a degree, and a good job, as she said. As she said. I felt she was out of my league and too perfect. Every day she posted new photos. And I told my friends about her and they seemed pretty jealous. Except for my friend Ryan. He said I was stupid because I never spoke with her. And I only messaged her. She invited me over because she said she can cook. Ryan told me to don't go. Yeah, the rest no. of my friends said don't have any kids and they would laugh. So I went over there. But not without Ryan calling me a clown first. You are. The GPS says she lived about an hour away. Damn. When I first started to talk to her, she told me that she lived in a nice neighborhood. But when I got there, there were people everywhere and the neighborhood was not that nice. When I stopped at the stop sign at the corner, people walked up to my windows and asked me, what do I need? What? But I pulled off really fast and got to the house. It was a duplex, so I messaged her, and she said to come up the stairs. You should have left. It was about nine at night, and people were everywhere just standing around. I knocked on the door, and I was definitely excited. The door opened, and to my surprise, it was a bald-headed white guy with a patchy beard. Yeah. Tattoos everywhere, including his head. Yeah. With a tank top on. I asked, was Lisa home? And he said, yeah, come in. He's Lisa. When I walked in. I was immediately hit with a musty smell mixed with cheese. What? He told me to sit down, and he sat down across from me on the couch. He said she'll be out soon. He asked me did I want something to drink, and I said, yeah, sure. When I got up, I texted her, can she come out, please? So we're going to pause it right here because I got something to tell y'all. Let's just say that... He still proceeded to go to her house after the encounter with the weird people at the stop sign asking, what do you need? 
could have just blown it off to crackheads and shit like that. Those are everywhere. But this older Caucasian male with a beard answers the door. You say you're looking for Lisa. He tells you to just come on in and have a seat. That in itself should have been a sign that you need to bounce. Let's say that there really was a girl named Lisa in there instead of this overweight guy, this creep, who I'm pretty sure he's Lisa. Let's say he really did have a daughter named Lisa, right? Why in turn would he just allow you to come into his house and you're apparently gonna take his daughter out or you're coming over or whatever, y'all gonna hang out and do whatever. Most fathers, if not all fathers, when a young man comes over to meet or hang out with or take their daughter out, that motherfucker will have you waiting at the door. Yes, I know it's pronounced door, don't judge me. If they don't make you wait at the front door, once you get in the house, motherfucker, you not gonna be allowed to sit down. He gonna be allowed to sit down because it's his house and he gonna be questioning you like he the police. Where are you taking my daughter? How long have you guys known each other? How did you guys meet? Where do you work at? What are your intentions with my daughter? They're gonna be asking all these questions and y'all know that's factual. Y'all know I'm telling the truth with this shit. He gonna get fucked up. He immediately said yes. The man came back in with two cups of juice. Don't drink it. One for him and one for myself. Please don't drink it. Then I noticed that he put a phone down on the table next to him. So I acted like I sneezed and got some on my arm. Then I asked for a tissue. He went to get some tissue and he left his phone like I thought he would. I texted her back and to my horror, the phone rang. I looked on the caller ID and it was my name. I heard him coming back. Run. He came back and we sat there for about a minute. And then the phone rang again because he never checked the message that I sent. He looked at the phone. I looked at the phone. Then we looked at each other. Mm. <laughs> I postured up. And he calmly said, I guess you caught me. Then out of nowhere, he lunged toward me. See? To grab me. I punched him. And he fell on his face. Bah! I ran out of there so fast and I never looked back. Yeah, I called the cops. Hell yeah. And when they got there, the man was still knocked out. Damn. After that... I never went on dates with people that I've met online again. I bet. You're one of the smartest ones through this whole countdown. He was coming after you with that third leg. <laughs> Bruh. No long distance relationships, no internet dating. If you can't, you know, flirt with and conversate with a motherfucker right in front of you, don't do it. This motherfucker, though, in this last story, boy, that was almost his ass. But, hey, comment down below if I was telling the truth about what I said with this last story. If that was a real father and he really had a daughter named Lisa and this is his first time meeting you, especially if she met you online, oh, bruh, he turning in to the police if he's not already a police officer. Bro, he's asking you more than 21 questions. Bro, I'd be surprised if he actually allows you to come in to the house instead of just making your ass stand on that front porch or back porch. However, you get into the house. I love these stories. I really do. No internet dating, bro. Nah. Like I said, if you can't meet him and talk to him and hang with him in person... Fuck a relationship and fuck anything else. Any other type of communication with him, bruh. Like, ain't no meeting people from online. Fuck that. Hell no. You gotta be a fool to do that. And if you do do that... <laughs> do do. If you do do that, you need to make sure you have one or two other people with you. One at most, though. Two, but don't let that second person be seen. Because now it's going to be awkward. Or you could just bring a weapon. I prefer a Glock or some type of firearm as opposed to like a fucking pocket knife or mace, really. 
What did you guys think of the stories? What did you think of the shit these motherfuckers were doing? They were all bullshitting, of course. Leave your comments and your opinions down below. That is it for this video, y'all. If you like my reaction, like the video, comment on the video, and share the video. And if you really liked it, subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. And tap that bell icon so you will get notified every time I drop new content, which I do on a weekly basis. That is all I got for y'all this time around. Your boy Steph is out.